episode on Take a Seat. This is a channel that I've created so we conversate with some of the biggest entrepreneurs, business people, and high profile influencers. We've already had Jason Patterson, the short lease king. We've had Samuel Leeds, who's shown us how ADHD didn't stop him becoming one of the top property course providers. Last week, we had Property by Kazion. He showed us he dropped out from university, set up a shisha bar, and how he still made it in the property world. Today, we've absolutely got a gem of a guest. This guy's been on ITV, Channel 4, and BBC One. I know him personally from university, doing accounting and finance, and also in the banking world where we both started. He actually helped me on my journey. Welcome to the show, Emmanuel Asikio. Sean, how are you, man? I'm good, bro. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. What's been happening? Life, man. Life has been happening. You know, we thank God. God has been good. Like, you know, you know, you know where we come from and, and, and where we grow up and stuff like that and those environments. But now, you know, business is going well. I've got a book coming out so that, you know, people can pre-order that. We've got a book wow, coming out. Wow, what's that book on? It's called um, Get Your Money Right. It's published by Harper Collins, who are like the second biggest publisher in the UK, I mean, in the world, sorry. And yeah, they've basically, it's basically about a guide to money. So teaching people about money, finances, the stuff they didn't teach you at school in the most layman's terms so you know i go from teaching people the banking system and how the banking system actually used to work and how it works now and how banks make money it's amazing how um people don't know the basics yeah. about money yeah yeah, yeah. you know it, it it's not really taught a lot and it's not really common knowledge no because they don't want you to win right so how how do, how do i make sure that i'm always one step ahead that's by me having the knowledge and you needed to come to me to get the knowledge and so what I realized when I got into the banking system and working in finance is that people are making mistakes, but they're making the mistakes because nobody taught them the right way. And so for me, even when they wanted people to teach in the right way, you either had to have loads of money to get a financial advisor t- to teach you, or you just had to make the mistake and learn from the mistake and then go again. And actually for me, it was like, I can just tell you how to do it and do it in layman's terms, do it in a language, do it in a way that you understand, use examples that will make sense to you so you can make better financial decisions. That's so important nowadays, you know, definitely. And <clears throat> before I even go any deeper into this, um, Manny, can I call you Manny? Yeah, go ahead, call me Manny, man. That's what you're used to. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I know Manny like for over 15 years now. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we knew each other at university and meeting you today, you're no different, man. You're <laughs> as a, you're a realist as you've ever been. Yeah. And even at that time, you had such a big heart because something in my community nobody yeah. wants you to win no yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. wants you to get ahead yeah, yeah. and my granddad always said sean i think you should get into banking mm. um work your way up i yeah. want you to be a bank manager i don't think he really knew what a bank manager was he just wanted yeah. me to be in charge of money with next to a, a FTSE 100 company because yeah. for him coming into this sort of economy into this country yeah that was a big step so i looked around me and at that time you was already in working yeah, environment yeah, yeah. in banking, which I was really impressed by. I'm like, we're at university and this guy is already working in banking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you gave me a heads up. You were like, just ring that number, you know, um, do the telephone interview. Yeah. And these are the next steps. Yeah. And I just found that to be so real. So when I've entered in the social media space yeah. and I'm looking at my podcast, I was looking for you, man. <laughs> I didn't have to look too hard. Yeah, yeah. But I see you on link. I see you on LinkedIn, and I was just like, "Yeah, we've got to have him on." And you guys have got to know that, you know, because not a lot of people know. People think how you are on camera, mm. you're totally different, and that is true. Mm. But you're not one of them, bro. You know, a lot of people are, you know, on the fake it till you make it. On just, but for me, I think it's important. Like I know that I'm. I didn't have a head start or I didn't have an uncle or a cousin or someone that was in the building that could give me a leg up and say, oh, come and hear some work experience or whatever. Everything I had to grind for. But I know that there were people that gave me chances. There were there were people that 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 gave me chances didn't have to. So for me, it's like if I'm in a space, I want my people to win. I want to see more of us. So when you when if I tell you I've I've helped over 30 people get a job in Barclays and I was there. Wow. Like Literally, I used to coach people on what to say on the phone, how to answer the questions, what they're going to ask you, what examples to use, get everyone prepared and do it. And it wasn't even like no one paid me. I didn't ask them for no money. It's because actually there's a joy in giving. Like there's a joy in helping people. Like, and that's your legacy. 
Like for me to know that, to see someone as great as you, Sean, doing what you're doing and to know that I played a small part in helping you get there. That's legacy. That's going on for life. Like you'll be, able, we'll be able to tell that story to our children's children. Do you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and that will go on. And the more people you can help, the more joy you can put into the world. Cause there's so much hate. There's so much pain. Sure. Every day when you watch the news, you see this is disaster. This is, <clears throat> and I'm always saying you can't save everybody and you can't help everybody, yes. but you can help someone. You understand that like you can't, you can't save everyone, but there, there's somebody that you can help. There's somebody that you can change their life. There's someone you can make a difference to. And for me, I, I just live by that. The more I can help others I've known in life, the more I've been able to help others, the more blessings, the more power, the more money, the more um, success I've been able to achieve in my life. And that's what I find out about you is you're just so authentic. I love it when you're actually just like um, really yourself as yeah, well. Yeah. And it actually draws me closer, so especially yeah. when you sort of do your accents as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that, bro, because I'm like, that's him. Yeah, you know, you know what's you know what's funny is that um, I always tell people that when I started in a bank as a financial advisor. So basically, when we was at uni, um, I was part time. So I was I was at uni full time, but I was working part time as a cashier at Barclays, and so. I used to, I used to work really hard. And then basically, um, we had what they called mystery shops where you used to have people come and do mystery shops. Yes. And I, I got a hundred percent twice in a row on, wow. on a mystery shop. And I was at Oxford, Oxford Circus, which is probably one of the busiest, busiest. branches, especially at like lunchtime and stuff like that. And I, and I, and I got a hundred percent. So I, I won an award for that. And, and so when I had finished, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So when I had finished like uni 22, they were like, what do you want to do? Like, I was like, I want to be a financial advisor. And they were like, damn, there you go. Here's a financial advisor. And so that's how I became a financial advisor at 22, one of the youngest financial advisors in Barclays in the country at 22. So that's how we started. That's how you started. Um, <clears throat> but what I like to look at is where was the seed planted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that started at least a decade before this. Yeah. So even though that was the start, yeah, it took time to get to that start because yeah. I know personally that you didn't have the best start yeah and that's where i want to get to because yeah. a lot of people want to hear not just about your wins but you know what was difficult about your journey yeah so we want to know where did the journey start with eman um and you know tell us a little bit step by step exactly to the university sort of state so let's rewind back yeah so i mean i guess it started tower hamlets i grew up in tower hamlets east london um I grew up on a council estate in Limehouse. My parents are both Nigerian. They were born in Nigeria. They came over. So I was the first in my family to be born in the UK. And I just knew I wanted better. You know, I went to a school called Bow Boys, which is probably one of the worst schools in, in Tower Hamlets. Yeah. Um, it's, it was a boys school. The, the average, you know, five A to C's, that's what it was at that time. And, you know, we had less than 5% of people were getting five A to C's, which means you had more chance of ending up in jail than you did ending up in university. <laughs> so, you know, these are the types of challenges that, that we're going through. I was very good at sports. I used to play basketball. I used to play rugby um, and athletics. So I was very good at sport. And I just felt like that was going to be my life. So I didn't really take school too seriously. I just knew I was going to, I was just really, I knew I was going to be a sports star. I didn't really feel like I was taking school too seriously, but having Nigerian parents, they were on me like, hey man, you must stop it. Like, you know, <laughs> like you had to like, had to read your book, read your book, read your book. Like, so it. <laughs> it was just me on it. Like, so it was always book, 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 book. So I had to, I had to try and just do stuff in school just to keep these guys happy and so forth. And then obviously, I left school with four GCSEs, four GCSEs. And my dad was very disappointed. I was over the moon. Like, you know what I mean? My teachers were happy for me. And you done better than the I other done better kids. Than the, with other, a lot of other kids. <laughs> and you know what I mean? And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really push myself to do it. Do you know what I mean? And luckily my head of year wrote a note, wrote a letter for me to say, look, Emmanuel has been on a steep learning curve. He's, he's doing really, he's doing really, really well. And um, you should give him a chance to go to, go to college. And so that was how I, my head of year's letter plus my four GCSEs, I took that to, to college. And that's how I got into college, went to college, Obviously, now they're girls at college, so obviously I've lost my I've lost my mind, um, and just like now that I've been spent five years around boys, you know, burping and farting all day in class, and now there's girls sitting next to me, girls in the corridor, girls everywhere, and so you go through that puberty, you know, just focusing on girls. So I've just failed. It's a different. It's a different environment, isn't it? As Completely. Soon as women come into the mix. It's, yeah. It's you know, in a boys' school, it's very like testosterone, yeah, exactly. and who's going to be the class clown exactly. and 
he said this and he said that. But as soon as it's women in the mix, it's it's a little bit different, isn't it's it? It's different. Like your energy's different. Like now you care about how you're dressing. Like now I was getting haircuts. I wasn't even caring about all these types of things before and how you look, how you smell. Like, do you know what I mean? You're now, you're now trying to get perfume and aftershave and all these types of things. And then I got a girlfriend and do you know what I mean? It's all these types of things that you go through and it's like you're learning and, 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 education wasn't the thing for me like I just wasn't focused on that again I was playing basketball at, at college then from college I got I got to Greenwich University unconditional offer because I played basketball at a higher level they gave me an unconditional so you're telling offer. me that your um curriculum sort of in terms of sports got yeah. you into got uni. me into uni yeah 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 so I got got into uni off, off the back of did my, you do accounting and finance I also? did accounting and finance yeah so, so what made you choose that course my dad's an accountant so <laughs> So my dad chose that There was that no course. getting away. There was nothing. Like, <laughs> I was like, dad, I want to do marketing. You will do accounting and finance. Like, that was it. I had no option, no choice. So I had to go do that. So and luckily, it was, a good, it was a good choice for me. So um, so that's how I ended up doing accounting and finance. We had some good lectures, bro. No, we had some. Liz was the best. Liz. <laughs> Liz was the best. Liz was just hot. That's why. Like, yeah, Liz was hot, but she was also like, she cared. Like, I, she wasn't my tutor, but she used to, she used to check my grades. Like, you know, like someone just likes you. So she used to obviously notice me in a lecture and whatever. And like, she used to, she used to notice my grades. And when I got good grades, she'd be like, yeah, well done. And I remember there was one, one thing I didn't do quite good in, in one of my coursework. And she was like, Emmanuel, you can do better than that. I was so disappointed when I saw that. And just having somebody that actually cared. I think when you come from an environment where a lot of the time, a lot of people do not care about you. You are just a number. You are just a box to tick. Having teachers and having people that are older that cared yeah. was important. And I think that's why right now I'm so focused on giving back to the youth and yes. educating the young people to let them know that people care, like we care about you. We want to see you win yeah. because I know that that was something that was missing for me. And I didn't want someone else to go through what I, I went through. Yeah. Do you know what? I can relate to you so much on yeah. that front. This is why I've tried to go on my journey this year. Mm. It's the exact same reasons, bro. I, I feel that we've sort of gone to both boys schools. Yeah. We've both gone to the same uni, and yeah. we've sort of had that not the best foot. Yeah. Like, I mean, we weren't homeless no, or on no, the no, street, no. No, no. but we, we didn't have it easy either, you no. know. And we know how tough and hard it can be. And what, why not step out in front? Because exactly. I always wanted you there. I wanted yeah. you, I wanted you who you are now yeah. back when I was struggling, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you, you have become that man yeah, now exactly. and that's what I love about you and, and your journey. So inspiring. No, I appreciate it, bro. And it's like, you know, to be here now, to be sitting down with you is, is, it means a lot to me. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, it's easy now. Like a lot of people say, I respect you. I did it, but people will respect you because of all the things that you've done in life. Like they see you on the TV, they see you doing well, they see you successful. It's easy to respect that. But you've always shown man love. We've always had a connection from from uni and so forth. Do you know what I mean? And well, look at look at this. Look, people are so quick to to be like tissue paper. They yeah. use it today. Yeah. They don't care about tomorrow. Exactly. Nobody lives for tomorrow no more. They want it today. Yeah. The nowness. But look, we were in a platform where Greenwich University was the yeah. common factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barclays, a FTSE 100 co company where we were both employees of. Yeah. Today, we're on our own shows yeah, yeah. and we're conversating. Yeah, like, yeah. look at that 15-year circle. But I wouldn't be next to you or you wouldn't be next to me yeah, yeah, yeah. had I shown you attitude or tried to use you, abuse you and said, what can I get off this guy? And yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, the, the energy, this is where tomorrow is important. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly. I'm, and I think it's so important that, you know, I love to see people that I, I grew up with and see them doing well. Because I know where we come from. It, it, the statistic, statistically, we shouldn't be here, bro. Like, and I don't know if you ever think about it, but the reality is, is if you look at the statistics and you look at where we come from and the environments that we come from, we shouldn't be here today, be entrepreneurs, be having our own businesses, and even us thinking about giving back. We shouldn't even have anything to even be able to give back. But we've been able to overcome all those, all those obstacles, achieve, and then say, you know what? It's great to achieve. And this is one thing I tell people about money and success. It's great to achieve money and success, but you get to a point where you make enough money and you have enough success that you actually, it doesn't mean as much as when you're able to help just one person. Like when I go back to a school and I speak to a group of young people and then I can see that they now believe that they can achieve anything in life because they've heard my story and they feel like me and them are the same. So if I can do it, they can do it. What's, what's the value in that? Where What price can you put on that? How much money can you make to get that? It's priceless. You can't touch it. And so you get to a level where actually giving back 
actually gives you more yes. satisfaction than the money or the house or the car or whatever it is. This is it. This is it. You give me goosebumps, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that same train, bro. I'm just like, oh, wow. Honestly, like, you're not just somebody on the TV. Mm. <laughs> you're not. You're so much more than that. Yeah. And I just love how authentic you are. I keep saying it, but yeah. you're just like full circle all, all the way. What kept you motivated along the, the first part of the journey so getting into the university yeah, yeah, and yeah. and then getting your part-time job obviously sports kept you happy yeah, yeah of what, course but you could have easily gone i'm not doing it yeah yeah what kept me happy was knowing my why and 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 my why was my mum like when i was younger my why was my mum like my mum is one of those like where we grew up we didn't have much and um my mum, she became a dinner lady. So a lot of my friends' parents worked several jobs. Do you know what I mean? But my mum was always like, whatever I do, when my kids finish school, I need to be at home so that I can make sure that they're in the house and not on the streets. Because she knew that if, I, if we're on the roads, we could be getting up to trouble, bad things to be happening. We could be... So she always made sure she did jobs that allowed her to be home when we were home and be off school. When she, so she chose a dinner lady. And so doing that, you know, a lot of standing in the kitchen, and so what happened is that affected her knees. So my mom ended up walking with a limp and we, you know, to get into our estate, you had to climb stairs and she used yeah. to struggle, you know, and I used to see my mom do this for us every single day, limp all the way to work, limp all the way back and do it with a smile because she wow. needed to make money so that we could eat, so that we could have clothes, so that wow. we could, we could live the sacrifices. And I said to myself, mom, you're never going to have to ever regret believing in me. You're never gonna, you're never gonna regret investing in me. You're never gonna regret the fact that now, like my mom has metal in her knee because she had to have a knee replacement, but she will never regret that because I've retired my mom. Like wow. I give my, send my mom money every single month. And, and it's funny, every time I send her money, she will send one long WhatsApp prayer. God will bless you. And I'm like, but it's all right, mom. We've been doing it for a while. Like, but you know, it means a lot to her for, for, for the, you know what I mean? For to get that money and for me, that, get that support. And it's like, that was my why. So when I used to see my brethren messing about and do it, I'm like, bro, you guys can do that. Like maybe your parents are here, like your parents are from here or your parents are born here. Like my parents are born in Nigeria in a village. Do you know what I mean? They killed themselves to get all the way over here to give me this opportunity. I'm going to be successful. I might not be great at school, but one thing I knew, I knew from young, I can make people laugh. Yeah. I knew I knew how to make people laugh. I knew people like me. I like people. Or we get on. So I was like, I've got to use this skill to make me money. Do you know what I mean? And so that was my why. That was my focus. That was like, I've got to get it. And then I used to see the buildings in Canary Wall from my house. And I was like, this is it. I've got to get over there. I've got to get into these buildings. This becomes my vision board. And I always tell people, you've got to have a vision for yourself. Like we all have sight, but we don't all have vision. And for me, it was like, what is the vision for my life? And I visioned myself in that Barclays building. And by 22, even with all the failing in education, all the failure, I still became the youngest financial advisor in Barclays in the country. Like, do you understand? So, and all my, my, coll my colleagues, the average, fin my colleague, my youngest colleague was 45. My, and then the, the, but the average of them was like 55. All of my colleagues could have been my father or mother. And we're doing the same job. And that just goes to show, don't ever allow anybody's label on you. You're not defined by where you are today. I always tell people, you might not be where you want to be, but that doesn't mean you can't be where you want to be. Of course. Do you know what I mean? You've got to have the belief. You've got to have the belief. You've got to believe beyond your, your situation. Exactly. Like I was in, I was, I come from nothing. I was in, we was in, we was in poverty. We, we were struggling. But now we live life on our own terms. Like we live life the way we want to it. And, and I have that financial freedom because I believed beyond my situation. I didn't say, oh, I haven't got money in the bank. That's what people do. Oh, I want to I want to start a business, but I haven't got no money. So they'll, they'll do nothing. No, 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 no. I haven't got, if I've got a business idea and my, my I'm lucky, my only problem is I don't have enough money. That's my only problem. If that's your, there are people that can't walk, that can't see, that, that struggle, that are, that are paralyzed. Now that's a problem. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you've got all your capabilities and the only problem is, is that you haven't got enough money to get started, that's a great problem to have. There you go. There you go. I, I love what you said about the vision, mm. you know, and for me, I can also relate on that same point yeah. because as a young 13 year old, 
you know, working dad shop and then getting jobs yeah. in cash and carry. Yeah. I had the vision that I wanted to become a property guy. Mm. I also got five GCSEs like you, <laughs> yeah. you know, I wasn't the most talented, yeah. but I knew where I wanted to get, get to, to yeah. you know, and I, I wanted to make my parents happy to get the, the grades exactly. and, and, and get a degree. Yeah. But I knew where I was also going. Yeah. And just having that vision and that belief from 13, yeah. you know, I also got into Barclays and exactly like you, um, I it took me two and a half years to get to a B5 role yeah. for a premier manager. Yeah. So I, I think the financial advisor role was the same B5, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, all of a sudden I was with people like Jim Smith. Do you remember him? Yeah, yeah, I know, you know? Yeah. So I was surrounded by 40 to 60 year olds as well. Yeah. It's the exact same pattern. But you just believed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and this is what we can show, you know, the youngers right now. Yeah. That if you do have that vision, don't let anything be a barrier. Yeah, exactly. Don't allow anything to be a barrier. Don't allow, like I always tell people, the, the person stopping you from getting to where you want to is you. <laughs> and when you, and the day you realize that and realize like, wow, I can do anything I really want to, anything I put my mind to it. Like at the end of the day, if someone said, if you said, if your goal was, I want to be a millionaire, you can become a millionaire. Like, 100. like it sounds like I'm just gassing, like I'm capping, like, but at the end of the day, if you work out, I've got X amount of money, it might take you years and years and years, but you could continue to save and eventually you'll get there or you can find new routes to make money quicker and get there. The point, the point being is, is that for me, it's like, Sometimes we ha we don't dream big enough because we come from nothing. Our dreams are small. Our dreams are, oh, I want to own a house. I look at, I look at you, Sean, and you got, you got your million, your millions of pounds property portfolio coming from humble beginnings. Like you, you, you could have settled. You could have bought the first one and been like, I made it because you buy, you buy in one house coming from your situation and your environment, you've already won. You could stop there and you'd already won. What made you carry on? <laughs> Just my, my, my focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where I wanted to get to. Mm -hmm. I, I know I wanted to be a millionaire. Yeah. And I knew to get to a millionaire, one of the biggest gains was real estate. Yeah. And I know how it hit doubled and quadrupled in the 70s to the 90s yeah. with my granddad's journey. Yeah. You know, on the on the residential houses and how they bought a business with my dad, etc. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'm just going to replicate the same thing, but I'm going to learn everything that my granddad learned. Yeah. Through his journey, learn from all of his mistakes. Yeah. Learn everything from my dad and any work experience he's given me. Yeah. And learn from his mistakes. Yeah. And then put this stuff on steroids by doing my degrees, learning the economy, knowledge, yeah. what cycles, how it's cyclical. Yeah. Getting my earned income, putting it into assets and using the mentors around me to build that portfolio up. And I'm like, I have to do better than them. This yeah. is a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Family is a business. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you got to make, like you said, you know, your mum was walking up, they made it out of the village. Yeah. You know, my, my grandparents came in the 60s. Yeah. My dad came as a 10 year old. Yeah. How can it just go sideways from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've worked so hard to build that foundation. Mm. You've got to push yourself, man. Of course. You've got to take it to the next level. Of course. And, you know, still might not be as big as them. Definitely not in terms of, you know, relationship. Yeah. We still show them respect. Of they're, course. They're still the best people around us. Yeah. Our go-to people, our second decisions, when, when we're making a decision, we still ask them, yeah. even out of respect. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You give them that importance. These are the people who made you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and just just from that sort of start, bro, like I, I felt, you know, you just can't stop. No, I agree. You can't stop and you carry on and then the vision changes once you get to some of your goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, I, and, and you're allowed to do that. That's 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 <laughs> the big thing is that you're allowed to you're allowed to change. You're allowed, like I said, my why when I first started was my mum. Now my why is my, my kids. I look at my my four kids and I'm like, I know the life I wanna give you. And the good thing about my why being my kids is that I see them every day. Yes. So every day, if I ever feel down, if I ever feel unmotivated, I look at my kids and I say, I may not be motivated today. But I'm gonna be disciplined. I'm gonna be because you can't always be motivated, but you have to be disciplined. And I'm gonna be disciplined to do what I need to do to give these kids the life that I want for them and give them the opportunities I want for them and give myself the life I want for me. I deserve it too. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It can't just be for yes. them. Sometimes you're allowed to think about yourself and, and my wife and what we Come want and, and the lives that we want to live. Do you know what I mean? Even the alphabet says it. <laughs> Before there's you, there's I. <laughs> Come on. 
<laughs> exactly. So it's it's important that you that you that you do that because if I'm not in a good place, how can I how can I provide for them? How can I look after them? How can I give them what what I want for them? So there is a point of looking after myself, looking after my wife, like and the fact that my wife, this woman, this wonderful woman, believed in me, wow. married me, supported me on my journey. Do you know Come what I mean? On. Loved me when I when when we were struggling, when you're when you're starting out. Because again, a lot of the time when you start self employment, you're nobody. You can, I was in the bank. I was I had my company credit card, my company car, my bonuses salary everything business cards i was living life then you, when you wanted to start from start your own thing you're back to zero now you're, you're, nobody knows you nobody cares you only you had a i had a multi-billion pound bank behind me whenever i spoke people listen now you've got your own company name that nobody's yes. heard of it's only been registered like two months nobody cares yes. so now you've got to make them care now you've got to build which takes time. You gotta build awesome. connections. You gotta build income streams. You gotta build, build your brand. You gotta build credibility. And that takes time. And when you're doing that, you might not have as much money as when you were employed. But my wife still stuck by me. She still supported me. She still believed me. So now that we're here and we're living life and life is good, know she's going to enjoy. Know that my kids are going to enjoy. Know that we're going to enjoy this, this thing called life. Cause who knows how long we've got on this, on this earth. There you go. There you go. We got to give thanks for all of that. Yeah. So let's rewind a little bit where we're in Barclays now. Yeah. You've just been spotted where mystery shoppers yeah, have, yeah. you know, given you a hundred percent for your yeah, service. Yeah, yeah. And let me just make that a point. That wasn't easy. No. It wasn't easy. You had to know how to greet a customer, yeah. greet and meet. Yeah. You got to ask them certain questions and a yeah. fond farewell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Et cetera. It, 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 it was for you to get it twice in a row. It showed how consistent you was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's also a reward. Of course. The reward comes. You've um, graduated now from yeah. university. You've obviously got your foot in the door with this FTSE 100 company. Yeah. Tell us your journey, you know, in a nutshell, how it went and how speedily you kind of moved through the ranks and what you learned on this part of the journey yeah so this part of the journey was I, I always called it learning on the job so I knew I wanted to become a financial advisor and I, I knew I wanted to do it for myself but guess what I got to get the education for free I got to get the knowledge for free I got to learn the skills and make mistakes on other people's time and other people's money so that when I finally went out to do it for myself I knew what I was doing so I became a financial advisor at 22 very young um, and it was very difficult because you're teaching, you're, you're giving advice to people that are 60, 70 about pensions. You ain't even had a pension yet. And now you're trying to tell someone how they should, what they should do with their pension or how they should start investing or life insurance. You know what I mean? These are things that you've never really, um, experienced yourself or done, done before. You just learn it in a book and now you're out here gi giving advice. But one thing I knew was I'm a people person. What's my skill? What do I bring? People like me. I can make people smile. I make people feel comfortable. I'm relatable. You know, I give people that confidence that I'm going to, I'm going to do a good job for them. So as long as I kept doing that and, and played to my skills, it was great. But what I say is, is that you keep mentioning being authentic. But when I first started, because I was in the city, because I was around, I used to put on a voice. I used to not talk like this. I used to put on a kind of, I call it my Made in Chelsea voice and, you know, talk like I'm, I'm like I'm from, if anyone's watched the show Made in Chelsea. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah, John. like, Would yes. like a glass of water, perhaps a cup of tea? Exactly. <laughs> all, all of that. And it's like. I'm on that train with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, because everybody talks like that. Everybody in the city, everyone in the bank, everybody at the level that you're at, that's how they speak. That's, that's how they are in meetings. And you almost replicate that. You just feel like, okay, this is what I have to do and so forth. Do you think that was right? Um, Good question. I think, I think I needed to do it to know that it was wrong. Sometimes you have to go on a journey to know that, okay, actually that's not for you and actually be yourself. So I used to do it. And then eventually once I got comfortable, because there comes a time where you need to just copy because you don't actually know what the hell you're doing. You've got this job, you've got this position, but you don't know what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? So now it's like, how do I do this well? Because I'm, this is still people's money. I'm still giving advice. So what I need to do is copy those that are doing well around me. And then once you copy, you learn their styles, then you start to blend what you like from theirs with yourself. And then so I started to drop the accent. And guess what? I used to go to client meetings, yeah? And I'd talk, talk like this. And then all of a sudden, the client that was talking all posh that, they'd, they'd start talking like from Leeds, Bradford, Liverpool. They would drop their accent because actually... A lot of people are just faking it. They will get comfortable and just start talking, relax. I'd have guys that I'm talking to and 
when when I started when I dropped the accent, I started talking to the normal. Debit. Oh yeah, I love rap. I love hip hop. I love grime. I love like this and, this and all of a sudden we're having conversations. And guess what? One of the biggest things I learned on that journey is people buy people. Yes. People buy people. People were doing investments not because they cared about the investment, but because they cared about me and they trusted me and they believed in me to give them the best advice. Yes. And so when I realized people buy people, I stopped. I stopped caring about what other people and, and presented my authentic self in the best way possible. And people bought into me. And that's how I became very, very successful very quickly. And so I became very successful, but then we had a recession. Yes. So then I had to then, because of the recession, I left, but just put, I left. And then a few months later, Barclays sacked all the financial advisors wow. um, and made the premier managers financial advisors and, yes. and, and got rid of us. And then I went to another bank and then they eventually sacked the financial and I went to another bank. And, and then I realized I can't keep going to banks that this is not a, this, a, this is not happening. So I had to go independent and go for myself. And I went down the independent route and it was very difficult. There's a lot of challenges along the way. But what I would say is, is that, when I look back now, I wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't be the person I am today without being what I'm going through. And um, I, I listened to this story yesterday and I, want, I wanted to, to share it because it's amazing. So, so, so there's a story about um, a butterfly um, and it's, well, it's, still a, it's still a slug. It's in the cocoon. The cocoon's half open. And, 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 the, and it's struggling to, to get out. The slug is struggling to get out as it opens, as it's trying to turn into a butterfly. So a little boy is walking past and he t- see, see, sees, sees the, the, the kind of butterfly. So he opens the cocoon, takes the butterfly out, takes it home to mum. By the time he takes it home to mum, it's died. And he says, mum, why, what's happened? Why is, why is the butterfly died? And mum was like, oh, you took the butterfly out of the cocoon too early. You see, the butterfly, it's, it's, it wasn't ready to get out of that environment because it needed to struggle. So the struggle that the butterfly is going through, trying to open the cocoon, prepares it for when it gets out of the cocoon to be in the environment, which is the world. But you opened the cocoon too early, so they didn't. the butterfly didn't get a chance to go through the struggle. So it wasn't ready to be in the environment. And when I think about that, that is my life. See, the struggles that I've been through in life when I, at the time they were painful, at the time they hurt, but they were preparing me for the environment that I'm in now. And today, because of my struggles, I can be on national, national TV giving advice to millions of people across the country because of the struggles that I've been through that prepared me for myself now. So if you're listening to this and you're going through stuff in life and you're going through a struggle and you're wondering, why does this happen to me? How I want you to understand that the struggle you're going through now is preparing you for the environment that you're going into. I I think you said such a valid point there, uh, Manny. Uh, So many people nowadays, they just want it now. Yeah. They want instant gratitude. Yeah. You know, why didn't it happen (laughs) for me? And that's it. um, I'm sorry to say this, but it's just mental health after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I can't deal with this. I'm, you know, I'm in, you know, depression. Yeah. And, you know, what do you say to people who who have, who want that short-termness? Well, what is your main thing, uh, advice or... You know what would you what would you say to a person? Uh, for me, I just feel like one thing I I always say is is that even when people get it quick, as quick as it comes, as quick as it can go. So what you need to understand is that for me, success is a journey. It's not a sprint. It's it's a marathon. It's it's a long distance. You want to be successful for as long as possible. I meet people today who, in their thoughts, tell me, "I used to, I used to own that building. I used to live there. I've been on holiday with this, but it's come and it's gone." It's gone. So 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 it's great to have the memories, but today you're not in that position. That's not what you want. You want long lasting success, success that you know that is going to last you and hold you to give you that life for the, for the whole of your lifetime rather than just a period. You don't want three or four good years. You want 30, 40 amazing years. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes what, what happens is we, we're so wanting to have these really good, this really enjoyment, this amazing 18 months. But then what happens is the money runs out, the friends go away and then you're back to, you know, your, your retail job you know, at the counter and you're like, how did I end up here? I was on yachts with millionaires just this, just this time last year. That's not what you want. Success takes time and it takes time to build. I always tell people, I call it apples and and trees. You see, for a lot of us, we're chasing the apple. Like we want an apple, but you know what? If you want the apple, you always have to find someone that has the apple tree. 
But if you actually take the time to grow your own tree, now while you're growing it, you're not going to see anything. Because it's in the ground, it's in the dirt, you're waiting for it, you're watering it, you're nurturing it, but you're not seeing any, any results. Do you know what I mean? What the, what's that? Sometimes you have to put in the work, and the work that you're putting in today, you might not reap the benefits for two or three years to come. Yeah? That's how you build success. But over time, it grows. And then it grows into a tree. And then guess what? Once you've got that tree, not only can you feed yourself apples, you can also sell apples to other people. And that's how you build. And so for me, I want us to not have that short term. Oh, I want an apple today because you're always going to have to go back. You know, they say, give a man, give a man a fish and he eats, he feeds his family today, but teach him how to fish and he can feed his family forever. And it's like, that's what I want you to do. I want you to learn the skill. I don't want you to focus on the, on the result. Sometimes all we care about is the output, but what's the input? People be like, oh, even I want to live like you. I want to live your life. I want to be like you. No, you don't because you don't want to put the input to get my output. You just want my output and it doesn't work like that. <laughs> wicked bro. Wicked. So I want to ask, how did you get on TV? <laughs> <laughs> so how did I get on TV? Basically, um, it was March. 2019 um i just had our we just had our fourth child and i took two weeks off paternity leave i went back to work and they made me redundant like and that was what when i realized that you know your work don't care about you you are just a number like they don't they didn't care that i just hadn't had a child and you know i've got a family to feed they wanted me out and i'm gone and that's because i lived my life on their terms I only had one real main source of income. And, and as long as, as long as you live like that, you're always, you're always slave to the master who is the person that's paying your bills. And so what happened is, is I got that redundancy payment, but I had savings and I said, I'm not going back. I'm going to focus on doing content. I was doing content anyway, evenings and weekends, giving talks and stuff like that. But I was like, I'm going to put all my energy, everything I can into it. And basically I was posting, posting, posting. And then eventually a TV company approached me to um to audition and i auditioned and i was ready i auditioned i was ready i did great and i got on my first tv show and that what that came out in august that came out in november we filmed it in august it came out in november 2019 then we went into 2020 where we then had the lockdown so we have the lockdown people are talking about money then we had george floyd where we're like oh we, we need to, black people and black people need to be on tv yes. so we need someone to talk about money and it'd be preferably we need them to be black. Well, hello, I'm somebody that talks about money and I'm black. And so sometimes what happens is you can't wait for the opportunity. You got to be doing the work and then the opportunity comes and you match. A lot of people would have called that luck. Yeah, exactly. It's not luck. But it's not luck. <laughs> it's, it's not luck. You've been preparing for this I've been moment. preparing it. I've been preparing. And I've been preparing. The opportunity came. And the opportunity came. And, and I could when take them it. two things align, people have to call it luck. But we know you've got to plant them seeds. You've got to plant it. You've got to plant oh. it. So what happens is dual thread, but then when you get that opportunity, you got to knock it out of the park. And that's where I practice, practice, practice. Before I went on any show, I would practice, practice, practice. I would practice in the mirror. I would practice with my wife. I called up friends. I would practice everything so that it's not the first time I'm saying it when I'm on the television. And so I'll keep practicing. And even though when I look at those, I know I'm better now, I continue to go and keep teams to practice. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't about how much they're paying me. It was about the opportunity to go and do it and do it. And now I'm on TV. So I don't even tell people I want to on TV. I'm on TV so much. They know. <laughs> they know, they know. Like, I'm always, I'm always there. People are always seeing me. I just saw you on this. I just saw you on that. Like I'm always filming this and filming that and so forth. But it came through hard work, focus in believing in myself. The biggest thing is to believe in yourself. I believed in myself. I said, listen, I'm not going back to employment. Like, and not on those terms. I'm gonna if I'm going back, it's gonna be it's gonna work for me. But I'm gonna go and make sure I, I put my energy and effort into my business. And look how we're here today. Do they pay well? Good question. Yes, it pays well. Um, I would say that TV doesn't pay as much as what people think. Um, TV pays well. No disrespect to TV pays well, but the real the real comes from being on TV. So it comes from the corporate gigs. It comes from, you know, I give talks and, you know, at high, at big companies and so forth and get paid really well to do that. And I get, I get paid to um, do content on social media for other brands and that pays really well as well. So now I'm almost a content creator, not just for myself, but for other people. And I always say, look, I used to do all this content for myself for free and put it on Instagram. And now I get paid to do it for corporates. So what I was doing for free was preparing me for what I'm now doing to get paid. And so sometimes you just got to believe in yourself and understand that it's not always a monetary thing. Sometimes you got to do it, do it for free and learn the skill. And once you learn the skill, you can add the value that will pay. Nice, nice, nice. 
What was the biggest change of going from employed to self-employed? What are the biggest things that you had to learn? Yeah, I mean, the biggest changes is time, isn't it? So <laughs> when, you're, when you're employed, you have to be at work at a certain time. You know, you get paid on a certain day. You know, you, you know, you, you know what you've got to do. There's a structure. You are fitting in. Somebody else has already planned it all out. I always say employment is basically somebody had a dream and now they can afford to pay you. That's what employment is. Somebody had a dream of, of do it, creating a business. And now their biz, their, that dream has come well, well enough that they can afford to pay you. And so you just slot into somebody else's system. When you're self-employed, if you don't wake up, nobody's going to, there's no alarm for you. If you don't set an alarm clock, nobody, there's nobody's looking for you. It's your own time, but then you make no money. You drive your own performance. Your own performance. And so now it's up to you. It's up to you to make it. And then I always tell people like one thing I realize difference between, you know, being employed and self-employed is that you can make money every day. It was, it was a revelation. When I realized that there is money to be made every single day. I might not make money every single day, but I could make money. There's an opportunity to make money every single day. And it was like before I was get, I was getting paid one once a once a once a month. Once a month, yeah. So out of 365 days, I used to get paid 12, 12 of them. Times. 12 out of 365. Wow. If you if you scored 12 out of 365, you know, you've know you've done really bad on that test. And so now to be able to be in a position where I can, I can create income. Oh, oh, we need to set, oh, we need to pay for school, like nursery for the kids. Oh, how much is it? Okay. Extra work. I don't know if I put extra energy in, I can make more money. There's no limit to, you know, at work, you work really, really hard. Whether you, you get paid the same, you go on holiday for two weeks and then work and you work for, for the full month, you still get paid the same amount of money. Do you know what I mean? Whereas here it's like, actually, if I put more energy in, I can get more out of it. And so, yeah, but the bad thing about it is it's balance. One thing I tell people is that I don't know what weekend is. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of the time when you're grinding and you're like, every day is a work day. Do you know what I mean? Every day is a work day. So it's about finding that balance. And now that I've, now I've been able to hire staff and so forth, now I've got a lot more balance. But for the first few years, I was doing every job. Yes. I was I was replying to the emails. I was doing the business development. I was signing the contracts. I was doing the content. I was posting the content. I, now I've got people in place to do that. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be jack of all trades. Yeah, so from morning <laughs> to afternoon to evening still, you've got to say, I've got to hit this algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to make this to post later. Yeah. I've got to think about what's coming tomorrow, what means, how can I film this? But, you know, that's why I'm trying to find a balance also yeah. right now. But... I always think to myself, Iman is, you know, how hard is the other person working that is getting up there? You know, um, yeah. we're all on our own journey. Yeah, of course. But you know, if you're gonna work average, you're gonna get average results. Of course. And if you and and as soon as I get up in the morning, I'm telling you straight away the phone's on and the email's being replied to. Mm. You know, mm. as soon as I'm having breakfast, I'm sorry, but. I will be checking a few messages and yeah. I'd be looking at doing a little bit of research, what somebody else has posted, yeah. what sort of ideas, what can I talk about today? What's the topic yeah, today? What, exactly. what, what month are we at? What's coming up? Is it Christmas? Is it Easter? Yeah, yeah, is it yeah. summer holidays? Is it half term? What can I relate to it? Like, yeah. That's what you're up against. No, 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 definitely. That's what you're up against. You're always up against that. And also you have to understand is that, especially when you're successful, you create your own competition. That's the biggest thing that I realized yeah. is that the, the more successful I became, the more I, I let people know that they could do this and make money. So the more people started to take it serious. And then, like you said, the more I started seeing people, I'm like, right, that's, that's my video. Like, I'm, I'm watching somebody basically do a version of my video. And I had to understand it's okay. It's part, they're not me. Like, and that's sometimes you have to realize that actually, if you're doing something well, people are going to copy. And that's okay. It's not a problem because at the end of the day, what's for you will always be yours. Like someone can copy your whole style and everything like that, but they're not you. Do you know what I mean? And so it's like, actually, the more you, the more successful you are, the more you create your competition. So then it's about what energy are you putting into it? What do you want? How are you evolving? How are you changing the game? Because I already changed the game by doing what I'm doing to make people want to do it. But now they're thinking about how do they make it better? So now I got to think, how do I go to that next level? What's the next level I need to be on? What's the next things I need to be doing? So now, now, you know, now we're doing, I've got courses coming out. I've written a book. I've got like, I'm doing TV. I've got my own shows coming out. We do, we are doing crazy stuff, wow. things that you can never imagine because building a, platform. <laughs> building a whole platform. Do you know what I mean? To change a nation. And now we're, you know, we're, we're talking to talking to people in the Middle East, in Africa, in America. Like something that started in my bedroom doing videos on social media is now taking me across the world. Wow. 
inspirational bro thank you my brother. that's inspirational what what do you think like si since you've been self-employed yeah yeah what's been your sort of i wouldn't say loss what's been your biggest lesson <sighs> the biggest lesson I, I would say for me is, is about being present I feel like for a lot of the time, I'm so focused on my business. I'm so focused on my next deal. I'm so focused on helping people and reaching out to people. that Sometimes I wasn't present for my family. I wasn't present for my wife. I wasn't present for my kids. I wasn't there. Like they're talking to me, but I'm not really listening. I'm, my mind is somewhere else. And actually one of the biggest lessons I've learned is about being present, like, like taking in these moments and not missing them. Cause my kids are only this age once. They're only, they're only, they're only here at this age once. I can only appreciate them here once. So I have to make sure that I'm present. My wife is supporting me. I need to make sure I'm supporting her. It can't just be one way. Like she helps me with my dreams. I, she's got dreams too. She had dreams yeah. before she met me. She had yes. things that she wanted to achieve before I, she even knew who I was. Yeah, yeah, and true. it's my job as a husband to make sure she fulfills the best out of her life as well. It's not just one way. So these are the lessons that I've learned. And how, how do you manage that? You know what? I, the biggest way I manage it is number one, by managing my diary um, and making sure I create time to be present, time to have time with my kids, time with my wife, time with my family. But also it's about knowing that when, I, when they're speaking to me, switching everything else off. So I'm like you, if I've got my phone next to me and, and it's on, I will reply to a message. I'll apply to an email. I'll do it, but I switch it off, switch off the phone or I push it away from myself. So I'm just focused in that moment. I also understand that when I go outside, you know, I've got all these things to fight and battle. But when I come inside, I've got to be a husband and, and a father. And so that takes priority over business and work and all of this other stuff. Nice, nice, nice. I think even I've taken uh, <laughs> some some takeaways there, you know, because yeah. you can be very successful with business and yeah, yeah. your goals, but something that you can't put a price on is family, yeah. time, quality time, yeah. you know, and the input you put in around that. Um, so, Emmanuel, what do you actually do today? Like today, what is your, what what is the thing that I would come to you for? Um, I always tell people I do what I love and I get paid for it. That's, that's, that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a financial advisor in all senses of the form. So that, that basically means when I used to work in a bank, I'm a financial advisor. I have my own financial advice firm. So we do pensions, investments, life insurance, mortgages, all of that type of stuff. But then I have a financial education company where I teach people about money, how to be better with money, how to start, start the road so that they can then go to the financial advice firm in the future. But then I give talks, I do seminars, I do workshops, I do content online. Um, so I do it all. Like anything to do with finance, I do it. What's your most, um, uh, what's your most like favorite part of your job? Like, is it helping people to invest? Is it protecting people? Um, is there a special thing that really gets you up and saying, I can't wait for this meeting, this appointment? Yeah, I, I, I love, I love events. I love giving talks. I, um, I love to, to people come to my event or come to a talk that I'm giving. I feel like, oh, you're going to talk about finance. It's going to be boring or serious or whatever. And I love to give a talk and people be laughing. And then I speak to the security when I'm leaving and they're like, when are you talking about finance? So I was like, yeah. It sounded like it was a comedy show. Do you know what I mean? The way that everyone was laughing. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want. I want to make finance fun, make it entertaining, make it down to earth so that people can take it in and, and really understand it and really feel it. And to make people smile in a world when we're in a world that everybody wants you to be sad. Everybody wants you to, so much people are battling with mental health to be able to be the one smile that you might get in a day. That's why I love doing my videos and I, and I try and do my videos in an accent or try and make it as funny or as entertaining as possible. Cause I know for a lot of people that follow me, that might be the one thing they smile about that day. And that gives me great joy, but it's a great responsibility as well. So for me, I take what I do so seriously and I, and I, and I just want to try and spread that love and joy throughout the world. Seems like you're trying to make it into a sort of lifestyle. Yeah, that's it. I want this to be normal because remember where we grew up, it was very normal to be drug dealer. It's very normal to, to do fraud. Fraud is like, oh yeah, if you're fraud, man are giving you daps and shaking your hand like, yeah, bro, you're sick. You do fraud. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, I want it to be normal to be like, right, you know what? I'm really good at my money. Right, you know what? I own property. Right, you know what? I'm, I'm an investor. Oh, you know what? I, like, I want, I got a business. I want that to be just as cool as I do fraud or I, or I do drugs or I'm a footballer or I'm a musician. It seems like if you don't, if you, if you, when you come from the hood, if you're a footballer, musician, drug dealer or do fraud, you're a hero. 
And it seems like if you've got a normal job, if you work hard or if you're, you're, you're a waste or you're rubbish or you're, you're a neek. Do you know what I mean? And actually, I want to show people you can come from the hood and be hood and yet still be cool, being smart, having money, owning wealth, having assets. I want to make that cool. And like, for me, what I'm doing right now, I'm an expert. I'm a financial expert on television. Like, so I've got young people that thought the only way they could get on TV was by being a comedian or being a footballer or doing, but now they're like, right, I can be an expert and I can be on the TV. So I, I want to be like E-Man because I, I, I don't have to go the other route. And that's, that's amazing. Be, being a footballer, being, being an entertainer is great, but there are other options and that's what I want to show people. Yeah, of course there's, a, I mean, we're not all good at, you know, certain things and, Everybody looks on TV and say, I want to be famous. Yeah, yeah. I want to be kicking a ball yeah, yeah. and be earning money. Yeah. But not all of us are gifted like that. Exactly. And you can be a hero wherever you want yeah, to be. Exactly. We are, I believe we're all born with a gift. Yeah. We've got to find what our gift is. And, you know, sometimes we don't even enjoy that gift as yeah. much. But if you've got it, use it until you can do something what you actually want to do. Yeah. Some people don't want to go through that fire. Yeah, exactly. So I always tell people I wanted to be a financial advisor. I became a financial advisor and I didn't enjoy it. I was just helping rich people get richer. I didn't enjoy it. And and now I get to help people. Like I've helped people be the first person in their family to own property. Wicked. Like I'm talking That's hundreds strange. of people, hundreds of people now own property because I exist. That's legacy. When I'm gone, that will always be a fact. People's kids, kids will know that they're, that will be passed down. So for me, it's so it's so much more than than helping someone go from five million to ten million. Who cares? Like who really cares? Like you could have done that with or without me. But that buying a property, you were never gonna do that because you didn't think it was possible until you met me and I told you that it's possible. And because I I look like you and I come from a background like you, you now believe. And so many other communities have that. When I look at other communities, they have that. But in the, in the black community, unfortunately, that doesn't exist enough. And I'm gonna be that change. Come on, big energy there. <laughs> big, big energy. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to now fire you some questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can tell me, you know, you can tell me what, what what's your favourite yeah. sort of go-to on, on these questions. I want to yeah. get a little bit more into your brain. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite book? Favourite book? <sighs> i got too many. I can't pick one. But my favorite three. Can I give you my favorite three? Go on, top so three. top three. Um, and the why? <laughs> top, top three. Um, Richest man in Babylon, um, which just talks about how to budget, how to that that book changed my the way I looked at money and really made me think about paying myself first. Okay. Um, second, rich dad, poor dad. Yes. Um, because that book made me think about entrepreneurship, and also I made my dad read it, and he actually you know said sorry son for having the poor dad mentality. Um, and then who moved my cheese? I love that book. It's, it helps you understand about change and how to deal with change and how to overcome change. And those are the three things that have really shaped my, the way I think and the way I move. Yes. Is there any course that you've been on that you've really stuck out in your head that you think that course is worth going on? Yeah, good question. Not course, but one thing I did do, I did drama at church. Okay. That really helped me with my confidence. Yes. So um, I, I was quite, I was not, I wouldn't say I was shy, but I wasn't confident in public speaking. I used to get overwhelmed and be scared to stand up in front of people. So by doing drama, it forced me to have to face my fear, forced me to have to learn techniques in how to speak, how to, how to play a character. Like, and so that really helped me and shaped me in my life. So I definitely tell people, you know, if you're a person that's an introvert, if you're a person that's afraid of public speaking then go to public speaking classes or go to drama classes and get, get your, get that confidence to be able to speak in front of other people. Good. I'm going to look into some drama classes now, bro. <laughs> it's good, trust me. Yes. Um, how do you celebrate your wins? Good question. Um, I love to celebrate. I normally, honestly, and people, and whether you believe it or not, I like to buy my wife something. So like, my wife has always supported the journey. So wow. for whether it be a nice bag, a nice pair of shoes, take her to a nice restaurant, a holiday. Like whatever. I like to just do stuff for my wife like when I'm winning. <sighs> Eman, Manny, uh, when it's all said and done, what did you want to stand for? You know, like you're, you're, you're in your last days and you're saying goodbye to the world. Yeah. What is it you hope to have achieved and where does it sort of, sort of not end, but 
where 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 have yeah. you left it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I think the big thing for me was t- is, is to let people know that good things happen to good people. Like you don't have to be bad. You don't have to steal. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to be almost you're told if you're, you have to be bad if you want to win or you have to stamp on somebody to win. I want to show people you can be open, kind, loving to other people and good things will happen to you. That's really important to me. Um, I want to be able to, you know, have show my community that wealth is the way forward. How would you like to be remembered? Like, you know, some people want a statue of themselves, you know, um, somebody wants a plank, somebody wanted to have built something or yeah. left. How would you have liked to be? I just, I just want to be remembered as the guy that pioneered black wealth in the UK. I just want to be the guy that made black wealth a thing, made it cool, made it something that we aspire to, made it possible, opened the doors, showed us that we could, as black people have achieved wealth in the UK. I believe you can do it. Yeah. 100%. I can feel that energy in that room. <laughs> and anyway, I can help in any yeah. sure through my community also. Yeah, yeah. Guys, if, if, if you're following me, make sure you follow, you know, E-Man on all these socials also. And finally, is there a question that you wish that I'd asked you? Uh, there's no question I wish that you asked me. I just, I always wanted to know, like, what did you think of me at uni? Like, I, I, you know, uni was such a such a blast. It was so quick and and, and stuff like that. And then even though we worked at Barclays, you know, we were like we were different branches, and everyone was doing their thing. Like, what was your thoughts of me then, and how does it compare to like how you see me and think of me now? First of all, I have to say how you were then and now. There's not much difference yeah, yeah, apart yeah. from your confidence levels and you're just being more you and you're confident being you. I think you've realized that it's okay to be you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the more you are you, yeah, the more I like you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. (laughs) There's a lot of you's in there, but but you're absolutely like I've never felt a bad vibe from you Mm. ever. Um and you've always been very hard working. Yeah. So even when you were studying you always was in Barclays and I'm like He's one of us because yeah, that's yeah. from the Asian community. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're told to do. Always yeah. do a side hustle. Make sure you're at uni. And I'm like, such a hard working. You were always trustworthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I always looked up to you in banking because I started off as a cashier. Yeah. You was already a financial advisor. And yeah. I was just like, I want to be there. Yeah. A few times we spoke. You just said, just just carry on. Just carry yeah. on. That's all you did. You had your mystery shoppers. Yeah. But you would never look down on anybody. No. And... I mean, look, come on, look, I messaged you on LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah. God's sake. You know, we, we, we linked up on social media again. And when we spoke on the phone, I, I'm pretty sure there was about 15 years gap. Yeah, yeah. It didn't feel like that. No, it didn't. It was very natural. Yeah. yeah. And I, I really, I really enjoyed it. And meeting you today, man, this guy's on TV. <laughs> He's doing his own shows. And how humble you are, you know, that's what's going to take you the most further. It's, it's yeah. just, because you're being yourself yeah and 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 that's the biggest thing i can tell anybody else as well yeah. it's yeah. just just be yourself and i want to see you do so well thank you bro man. you're already doing so many amazing things you've accomplished so much yeah. and i want to be on part of your journey to say i'm rooting for you too yeah and anyone who's not following you follow you because everybody should have all of the tools in the box exactly I'm not going to be right for everybody. Neither are you going to be right for everybody. But take a little bit of everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why we have ment- mentors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is why we have parents who we grow up around and we take certain things from them. This is why we work in different employments, yeah. uh, different jobs. This is when we got self-employed. We, we, we choose the right employees. Yeah. It's all part of the journey. Exactly. It's so important to enjoy the journey also. Yeah, definitely. You know, because there's so many... Look, I, I, I'm pretty sure you've been on this same wavelength, but there's so many journeys that you've got onto the top of your mountain already. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you look back and then it just ends up being a bit repetitive and boring yeah, yeah. because then it is just a job. Yeah. You, there's no more uh, endorphin rush from it because exactly. you've spoke to a client, you've helped them with protection, and then it's just like a conveyor belt. Yeah. I know what to say. I know what to do. I am going to give him some sort of protection. He's got a peace of mind now, but what about me? Yeah. How am I growing from this now? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just receiving that same money. So you want to go self-employed. You want to add more workload. You yeah. want to do different shows. Then you realize you created more value for yourself also. Yeah. When you create your more value, 
then you want to walk into a room and instead of 50 quid, you're getting 500 pound yeah. an extra zeros because that's your value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's taking you time to become that person yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and get to that sort of level. That's what you should be paid, yeah. but you're giving the value. People are learning, people are absorbing. So Iman, can you just let us know finally, how do people follow you? What are yeah. your social media links? Give a, give a little shout out and we'll put the handles at the bottom. Sure. Well. So the social media is the e, the E-Man Effect UK. Um, so that's on Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok, all the same, all the same thing. And then it's Emmanuel Asuko, A-S-U-Q-U-O on, for LinkedIn. Um, and then yeah, the website www.emmanuelsuko.com. And so yeah, please reach out. Um, get, if you like the content, let us know, comment, share, like, subscribe. If you've got questions, you know, just, just reach out. We're here to help. There we go, guys. And nobody goes empty on this show. So we've got a Sean Land t-shirt and a baseball cap. So Come hopefully, on. hopefully you rock that as Come well. Come on, my brother. Thank yes. you, man. Love that, man. Love that. There I we go. appreciate that, man. Come on. This is... It's proper, man. It's proper levels. Come on, it's not a sticker, bro. It's embroidered. You know, okay. I like I like that bit. No, but like what it. I'm also gonna say is, this is episode nine, guys. We want another top guest. Thank you for all of the likes, the shares, the comments. All of this helps build up the community. We've already got up to twenty seven thousand followers on this journey in the in a, in, in a matter of eight months. We need to grow the su the subs on YouTube. But the more you guys support the channel, the better guests we're going to get to share with you guys. Thank you for joining us again and catch you on the next one.